80 to 56, Colorado defeats Washington State in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Ryan and I are welcomed by a familiar face, <laughs> Mr. William yeah. Whalen, out here in Las Vegas with us. Yeah. We'll let you have the first word here, William. What were your major takeaways from this really impressive performance by Colorado? Well, first of all, it's good to be here with you guys uh, and with you all as well. I mean, first takeaway is uh, what an impressive showing. Uh, for the Colorado Buffalo. So they've obviously struggled a number of times with Washington yeah. State this season. Uh, and I think they really showed an ability to play with emotion early on. Uh, they really didn't have their best offensive game tonight in terms of firepower. They were missing the, the 15, 16, 17, and 10 uh, that you can usually count on from Josh Scott. Uh, Wesley Gordon was not himself, particularly on the offensive boards. Uh, so you look at that and you think, how do they do that and still win by 21? Well, they get, obviously, a spectacular performance uh, from George King. Uh, really great minutes from Josh Fortune. So I thought this was impressive, obviously, to make a statement against the Cougars. Uh, but more than anything, to make a statement, I think, to the rest of the conference and to themselves, that, yeah, Josh Scott's a first-team All-Pac-12 player. Yeah, he poured in 26 points against Arizona in our big home win over the Wildcats. But he's not this whole team. Uh, getting George King back on track was huge, and I think that's going to pay dividends for them going forward. Yeah, obviously, Josh Scott and Wesley Gordon didn't bring their best game today, but they still combined for 12 rebounds and yeah. 8 assists, uh, so they did provide some help there. Ryan, Tad Boyle said that he really challenged this team to finally put together a 40-minute effort. We were kind of joking at halftime, okay, you know, when are they going to give up this lead? It never happened. Yeah, I think that was a really encouraging sign. Um, you see a team that you know ha has relinquished some big leads, uh, a team that did not play Washington State well during the regular season. You know, uh, winning by a combined 12 points in in two games that uh, were not ever comfortable for them, um, and for them to come out tonight and start off their postseason kind of with a bang and say, "All right, now it's time to go. Uh, now it's time to really bring it." And you know, they did give a 48-minute effort on both sides of the ball. Uh, and, I, and I noticed something just from the very beginning that they, they came out, they were smiling, they were having fun. I asked Tori Miller about it, and he kind of gave, he kind of gave the, uh, the answer of, yeah, you know, uh, everyone's kind of not taking it too seriously, playing loose, just playing basketball. I mean, that's what these guys love to do, and I felt like they came out and did tonight. Will, you brought up the fact that George King had a great game, 21 points in 23 minutes. We were talking during the game, when he came in as a, as a true freshman, we did not think he was capable of being this type of basketball player. You've watched from afar here recently. Yeah. What, to, what have been your takeaways from his development and what he brought to the court tonight? Well, I remember George King when he was first being recruited by the Buffaloes, as in Tad Boyle saw him play one night. Uh, and this is the kind of game that George King played. And this is the kind of game that George King flashed to head coach Tad Boyle uh, when Boyle uh, came to a tournament in Denver to watch him. Uh, Really, I didn't foresee this happening. Uh, I, I told you during the game, I didn't think he had the, the consistency in his outside shot, consistency on his handles. Uh, but more importantly, I didn't think that he was mentally ready for the rigors of a college basketball program, the work ethic, uh, the complexities that exist within scheme offensively and defensively. Uh, and yet he's done everything to prove me wrong, uh, to prove a lot of people wrong, and to prove himself and Tad Boyle right uh, with this decision to redshirt. It's been a, I was on a podcast the other night and I called it maybe the most surprising uh, storyline in the conference this season, the emergence of a three-level scorer for the Colorado Buffaloes. Quite frankly, like they haven't had, uh, it's a different fashion, but they haven't had this kind of guy uh, with this kind of ability since Spencer Dinwiddie to score at all three levels in the efficient manner that he does. So it's been a lot of fun for me to watch, uh, staying up late nights in New York City to watch the Buffs play. But uh, uh, obviously it's been great for this team. Fans have enjoyed it. And, uh, and I'm really happy for George. He's a great kid uh, who obviously put in the time and work that it takes to reach this level. 22 wins now for Colorado. Ryan, I think the biggest concern for Colorado coming into this game was what a loss would do to their resume for the NCAA tournament. Does a win really do much, or does it come down to tomorrow and, and what they do against Arizona? Yeah, I, I think, you know, if you're going to start boosting the resume, it's even uh, maybe in beyond beating Arizona. We, we always talk about how little they view um, these conference tournaments. It always seems like it, it can hurt you. It's really hard to make it help you. Of course, a win over Arizona, you're, you're getting to 23 wins. Um, that's another top 25 or top 50 RPI win. Uh, it's all building it. But really, it was just to make sure you didn't come out here and lose this game tonight because then you got people sweating on Selection Sunday. They didn't want to do anything, and, and the Buffs had, uh, didn't want anything to do with that either. 
came out and put on a performance on the floor. And now I think, you know, we get that matchup that you uh, – there's something about the Pac-12 tournament, I think, you know, Colorado and Arizona. And I, it's obviously coming from a standpoint of someone who co- covers Colorado, but it seems like it's become a staple of this tournament is watching uh, Tad Boyle and Sean Miller kind of go head-to-head here in Vegas and, and going back to L.A. Well, they, they've matched up every season except for a year ago when Colorado obviously lost to Oregon. And – I think one of the other great things about it is, obviously, with Utah's emergence in the conference, you have another great fan base uh, that travels in the conference. But for so long, I mean, when we talked about home court advantages, when we talked about uh, rowdy fan bases, it was Colorado, Arizona. And I still hold those two in higher regard when it comes to getting rowdy uh, compared to the Utes. But nonetheless, uh, should be really fun tomorrow. All right, well, they're going to kick off another... (laughs) basketball game so we better get off the court here but we're going to be back in the MGM Garden Arena tomorrow for that game against Arizona.